You're listening to the LaunchCast, your favorite podcast on the planet, brought to you by Launchpad 516 Studios with me, your host, George Andriopoulos. We're talking leadership, business, life, and growth right now as the countdown starts. It's like food for your ears. At this time, I'm going to ask that you fasten your seatbelts. Launch sequence. Launch sequence oh. activated. Launch sequence activated. Five. Four, three, two, one. Woo! You're not going to do it? (laughs) Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the LaunchCast. The storm is coming, but I'm prepared. Episode 323. Goosebumps every time. Welcome to the special Olympics episode of the LaunchCast. We are here live right now at the Special Olympics Spring Games, North Regional Games in Farmingdale. But first, it's the Launch Dad himself, George Andriopoulos, bringing you your favorite podcast on the planet with Mia, with Dave Chemetsky, right now as the beat drops. Into the black hole. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 323 of the LaunchCast. I am joined here by my beautiful daughter, Mia. Say hi, Mia. Hi. And David Chemetsky, host of Peace, Love, and Bring a Bat from Launchpad 516 Studios. What's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, bud? Everything is good. Everything is good. Bring that closer to you. All right, we're just going to do a quick intro here because I see that I just got a phone call that I need to pick up. We did a quick intro. Uh, We are here at the regional Long Island Games, Spring Games North uh, for the Special Olympics here in Farmingdale. We're going to be broadcasting all day. We're going to be interviewing athletes, coaches, volunteers, parents, everybody here at the Games. We're super excited to be here. Mia, you want to add anything? No. (laughs) She's very... Watch the podcast. Watch the podcast. Feed his ego. Feed my ego. Oh, Words boy. of wisdom. Thank you. Dave, <laughs> as, a, as a man with two daughters, anything you want to add to that? <laughs> well, for the daughter part, no way. Uh, <laughs> I won't get, go anywhere near there. But this is an amazing event. And this is it's a beautiful day. It's going to be the sun's out, sun creeped out, and kind of help all the people in Special Olympics. Yeah, that's it. Right now, we are sitting with Mr. Ralph Morales. He is a trustee here on the Board of Ed here at Farmingdale Schools. Hey, Ralph, how you doing, buddy? Good. How are you, Josh? Good, good, good. So we're, we're stopping here. We're interviewing uh, people along the way. There's my buddy Jim here. Don't even think about it. <laughs> uh, just talking about the day here, the Special Olympics here at the Regional North Long Island Games uh, here at Farmingdale at Howitt Middle School. So talk to me about the games, Ralph, what you think about this day, how important this is to Farmingdale. I think this is an incredibly important event for the community. I think it was amazing to see not only the Farmingdale community come out really strong, but the, the, the Long Island community that came to our stands and really cheered on the athletes. To see the athletes walk in and, and announce themselves and, and to see the joy in their faces, I think that makes this all really important. And when you, you know it's an important event, but when you see these children, you see the looks on their faces and the adults, and you see the looks of joy and just complete pride in their eyes, yeah. you realize that this is just an amazing event that's much bigger than just you know here in Farmingdale. It really is an amazing event. For, for the entire Long Island area, for sure. Yeah, M- much bigger than Farmingdale, but funny how it just kind of feels like home here, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know? So when, when you when you think about, and we talk about this on the show a little bit, I know we're not a regional show, we're, we're a national show, and I talk about my hometown ad nauseum on this show, but it's so important to me, and, and we talk about leadership on the show here. So talk to me about what the word Daler means to you in terms of leadership and, and tying it to events like this. We see when you think about a daler in this community, you think about people that go above and beyond. You know, people understand that leadership is a selfless act. It's not necessarily something you do for you, you do it for others. And then when you look out here and you look at someone like our superintendent, Mr. Defendini, who got up there and and spoke about these children, you realize that leaders are people that are not necessarily out in front, but the children. You know, they lead the way for us in many ways. And when you look at those kids, and again, the adults that are taking part in this event, you realize that leadership takes on a whole new meaning. You know, we, we know that leaders lead, and they, they try to galvanize people and lead people to good, good events and to good outcomes. And then you see these children, and you realize, you know what? They are leaders. They're leading us. They show us the way by, by virtue of their, their determination, their grit, you know, their wanting to compete. Yeah. 
that speaks volumes about leadership in my eyes, for sure. What do you think in terms of the, the lessons in leadership that the athletes here today can learn? Uh, uh, you know, there's first-timers here. There's people like my buddy John Cronin, who if there was a such thing as a, a, a Hall of Fame Special Olympic athlete, that would be him. Uh, he's incredible. Uh, talk to me about the lessons, uh, the leadership lessons that these athletes can learn at events like today. Well, I think the one thing you learn is, is sometimes the best leader is one who listens, so one who's observing. And I think that what these athletes will learn by competing with themselves, by, by seeing other people, is to realize leadership is about bringing people together. And it's about trying to be a community. And it's a community, in this event, it's a community of special Olympic ch children and athletes. But what they can learn and what we can learn from them is that we are one community. And when we come together in an event like this, we really strengthen each other. I strengthen you, you strengthen me, they strengthen us. Yep. That's what leadership is about. I hope the children learn that. I hope we learn that. Yeah. That we can really come together and about a, a good cause. And it doesn't matter color, it doesn't matter creed. It, what it matters is that we care about each other. As people, and that's what I think is an amazing event here, and it's something we can all learn for sure. I love that you're pointing that out. I, I, in my work lately, in the last couple of years, especially, I've taken on a lot of clients that are in the uh, nonprofit world, a lot of uh, uh, clients that handle people with differing abilities, and. Uh, Man, the amount that I have grown personally in the last couple of years just from working with them, I can't even imagine being part of planning these events uh, uh, on an ongoing basis, being part of it as an athlete, uh, what you could take away from it. So it, it's incredible. Incredible day. Thank you for being here, Ralph. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Thank yep. you, George. You got it. Okay. We are here with Donovan Zucchini. Donovan, are you a Special Olympic athlete? Yes. Very cool. Where are you from, buddy? Um... Islip. Islip. Okay, Islip, Long Island, for those that are, are listening nationally. Donovan, what, what games are you competing in today? Uh, I haven't got to be, like, running. It's like a track. Track. Okay, good. Have you ever done the Special Olympics before? Yeah. You're a pro, totally, right? I am a pro. You are a pro. All right, good. What's your favorite part about the Special Olympics? Uh, running and throwing balls. Just running and throwing balls? Kind of stuff. Is there any other kind of game you play for the Special uh, Olympics? Mm. Any other events you compete in? Re replay relay right relay. okay good that's a fun one too mm -hmm. all right so what's what's today there's a lot of stuff going on here we have an olympic village here going on we have the games what's your favorite part so far today i like to do running if we get someone to be a championship uh-huh you know what my favorite part is taco truck Don, what do you, what do you like about here, though? there's games here so for those not watching on video we have a whole olympic village here games everywhere the launch cast has media row set up all right, good. Cool. All right, can you do one thing for me? Okay. So we have this thing we have on our intro music where after, after our intro music drops, a big bomb drops, and then we scream, woo, on the podcast. Can you give me that on three? One, one two, two, three. Woo! Woo! All right, thank you, Donovan. Appreciate you, buddy. See ya. See you, bud. Five. All right. <laughs> okay, folks, special treat now. We have my man here. This guy, if there was a such thing as a Hall of Fame special athlete, this guy would be it. John Cronin of John's Crazy Socks. Yes, that John. Wait, but there's more. John Cronin of the Spreading Happiness podcast and John's Crazy Socks and medal winner on the Javelin today, right? Yes. Hi, John. Hi, George. How you doing, buddy? Very good. I feel right. great. All right, so I'm lucky enough I get to see John... At least once a week when he comes to our office to record the Spreading Happiness podcast, produced by Launchpad 516 Studios. And who's your executive producer? And George Edu Nablas. That's right. That's right. And I'm so honored to be that. Uh, so we're here again at the Special Olympics here in Farmingdale, regional Long Island Games North. And I am interviewing athletes today. So, of course, I had to grab my favorite Special Olympic athlete and interview him. Talk to me about today. How are you liking the games today? I, I game is uh, game is uh, is wonderful and I really put it for up uh, 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 morning this, this morning uh, 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 real well and I'm so happy. Uh, uh, I got uh, uh, I, I got I got uh, a silver medal in a uh, in javelin. And uh, it's a wonderful day. That's amazing. And, and me today. Oh, proud of you, buddy. So you have two more events today, uh, right? Two more, two more events. I'm doing a 100 uh, meter dash, and I'm doing a 4 by 100. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to win gold in those? I ho I hopefully. 
If you win, if you don't win gold, I can't let you in the office next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're uh, proud yeah. of you, no matter what you do. Uh, what are you doing after the games today? I, I, I have the game today. Probably like relax. Relax. Gonna Rel- go out to eat at all? What? Gonna go out to eat at all? Uh, I sort of. Um, I, I I don't know. Uh, probably like the next relax and um. Oh, cool down. Cool down, because it's a cool hot down. day, right? a uh, hot day. Yeah, it's a little uh, hot out here. It's a beautiful day, but it's like mid-80s yeah. already. Uh, me and John are both getting sunburned a little bit, but that's okay. We'll yeah, recover. Uh, we'll recover. All right, so I want to ask you, first of all, the games here in Farmingdale. I know you're newer to Farmingdale, but John's Crazy Socks is now officially a part of Farmingdale's culture because they just moved their offices, right? Right. So it's very close. What, what, where are you now? What's your street? Uh, we in uh, Y10 uh, by uh, BI, mm-hmm. uh, how, uh, Plevo- uh, Plevo- uh, uh, uh The office are going to be all the way to back. Yep. So by, by County Boulevard, right? Yeah. That's what it's called? Yep. So <laughs> John's Crazy Socks just moved here to Farmingdale. So John is officially, I'm going to make it official right now, you're an official daler. Right yeah. now. You're an official dealer. That's no two ways about it. He's wearing a green shirt. He's qualified. He's a dealer. So we welcome you to our community, John. And Thank you. I'm going to ask you a cheap, cheap pop question. John, what's your favorite podcast out there? My favorite podcast is Source Into Nobilis. That's right. The launch cast with your host, George Andriopoulos. And John's going to drop the woo for us when I count to three because he gives the best woo that we give at the beginning of the intro. So we'll do it together. One, One, two, two, three. three. Woo! Woo! Thank you, John, for being here. Thank you. See you, buddy. Thanks so much. Hello. All right. We're back for another interview here. I have three very nervous people here. (laughs) I want to to get everybody's name. So Keisha. Keisha. Brendan. Brendan. Brendan cut in front of Alyssa. Brendan cut in front of Alyssa. So Mm -hmm. we have Keisha, (laughs) Brendan, Alyssa, all right, you don't have to go right up to it. You can just, right there is good. There you go. All right, perfect. Um, so you guys are here volunteering, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So talk about where, where you're volunteering right now today. Um, we, were, well, <laughs> um, we, we were supposed to be by the track, but um, yeah. then we, we came over here and they kind of forgot. They forgot no. about you guys? Well, yeah, because yeah. we our cousin is here, but she goes to a different school. Okay. So, like, we were at the track for a while, met some nice people, and then we decided to venture off and come over here. Okay, cool. Your cousin what, is competing? No. Oh, just okay. Here. Just here. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. All right, so, and you guys go to Farmingdale? No. no. You go don't to go East to Islip. East Islip. Okay, cool. All right, so we have three volunteers. So where, you were volunteering before you got, so how did you guys get on here as volunteers? Um, I just signed we, up? It's on, it's on our, like, school website. Like, ah. it, they, some of the people from our school are here, like, people racing and Okay, stuff. cool. So how do you feel about the games here today? Is They're this cool. your first time at Special yeah. Olympics? Yeah. So talk to me about what you're, what you're seeing today and, and how you're So, liking. oh, I, I got a story. So <laughs> for, with the, the, the 50 meter dash, so there was these two kids. They were running. Uh-huh. <laughs> he hit me. He hit me. Like, boom, he hit me right, right in my and stomach. Then, I was like, and <laughs> then there was this guy that came. He came. I had to stop him like that because he lo- it looked like he was about to go hit someone. I had to catch him with my arm out. <laughs> I was all nervous. I was. <laughs> I was all nervous. I was gonna get like trampled down, but I got him. It was good. All right, so you're enjoying yourselves today, mm-hmm. right? All right. So, so what other kind of volunteer stuff do you guys do? Any any other volunteer work? I do Girl Scouts. All right. I'm in leaders club. Leaders club. I love. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you knew this, but so talking to the mic when you're talking. Why don't you two share a mic, and then you get this one. <laughs> That's probably easier. So this is the launch cast. This is actually an Apple Top sixty. Uh, podcast in the entrepreneurship and business category, and we do leadership. This is what this whole podcast is about, leadership, yeah. business, life, and growth. So I want to talk about leadership for a minute. So when you see the athletes competing at these games today, talk to me about what kind of lessons you think they're learning in leadership. Um, I'm, uh, Tough question. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shows how to be uh, like a uh, teammate. Yeah, maybe that, or like be your own leader, like yeah. basically, because they're running by themselves and they're they're learning like, oh yeah, I can do this by myself. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot of lessons they don't learned have to today. Depend on anyone to exactly. like be like first. Like they just have to be their best self and go. Love it, love it. All right, any other closing words before you guys go today? Um, Thank you so much. All right, Thank thanks you. for coming, guys. Appreciate you it. <laughs> Thank you. You got have it. Bye. <laughs>
And now a word from our sponsors. Well, that's a nice song. Hey, hey, everybody. It's me, the launch dad himself, George Andriopoulos, the host of the LaunchCast, the co-host of Over My Dad Podcast. But more importantly, I'm here today on behalf of Launchpad 516 Studios, the podcast production company that makes those two shows, the one you're listening to now, and so many others possible. Now, what is Launchpad 516 Studios? Well, it's the brainchild of Launchpad 516 It's a podcast production company, and we help you from conceptualization to production to recording to post-production to monetization. The key word here, let's turn that hobby, that idea into a revenue stream. But more importantly, let's get that important idea out there and get your voice heard because that's what matters right now. Hit us up, launchpad516studios.com to find out more information. Or send us an email, podcast at lp516.com. DM me at Launchpad CEO on all the platforms. Let's chat. Let's get your voice heard. We're pretty good at this, guys. Don't let this offer slip by you. Later, guys. Beep, beep, beep. We are interrupting this show to tell you about our podcast with a very special announcement. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying your podcast, which you're listening to right now. But I would like to tell you about another one. We are Sounds Like Autism. Produced by Launchpad 516 Studios. Which is full of impactful programming. It's the podcast that celebrates neurodiversity by speaking to the people who are helping to create a more inclusive world. I am Dave Thompson. I am an educator and an innovator and a leader within the space of helping the world become a more inclusive place for neurodivergent people as a neurodivergent self-advocate myself. And my co-host, Josh Mirsky, is an incredible, hardworking, big picture dude who is on the autism spectrum and super stoked to spread his message of inclusion along with me. We've had folks on from all over, all walks of life, all over the country and more. You don't need to be someone who is autistic yourself or have skin in the game. You don't need a family member or a neighbor who is autistic. You probably have one, but you don't need any of that to get stoked on neurodiversity and inclusion. We're confident that if you give us a shot, if you join us on our journey, that you'll be a lifer and you'll be fully invested in this mission. We are just so delighted and honored to have this kind of platform to share with you all what we do do check us out i hope you enjoy your current podcast and then after that skedaddle and come right over here to sounds like autism and check us out now back to the show you're listening to the launch cast produced by launchpad 516 studios with me your host the launch dad himself george andriopoulos Okay, we are back with another. We have an athlete today? Yep. All right, we have Christina here with us today. Christina, what's your last name? Morin. Christina Morin. Okay, what are you competing in today? 400 meter run and 50 meter, I mean, 400 meter run and running long jump. Okay, awesome. Have you ever done Special Olympics before? Nope, this is my first time. First time. So tell me about your experience. How do you like it? I love it so far. Yeah. And I really love running and I really love doing competing. Uh-huh. I've worked so hard to practice for this. Uh-huh. And if it wasn't for a girl with a big heart who's standing right there, which is my best friend, Grace. Ah, that's awesome. So she, so Grace got you involved with this. Yeah. Who Did she have to do much convincing or were you like, I'm all over it, I'm doing it? She helps me. And I look up to her as my big cousin. Aww. And I got to be a track and field runner through her. I love I that. I look up to her a lot. I love that. Okay, so this podcast, this is called The Launch Cast. We are a show all about leadership. Right, so you're talking about leadership a little bit. Talk to me about what do you think leadership is and how do the games here today, the Special Olympics, help you in your leadership? It helps me because a lot of special ed kids like me, I'm in special ed, Mm -hmm. and it gets the kids involved in doing sports. I love that. And I would love to do this something like this. And special ed sports is just for me. I've practiced a lot, and another thing I love to do is sing. I sing Mm. in my Wednesday night youth group as the lead vocalist, and everyone just loves me. I love that. I love this confidence. I love this. So, so I'll tell you something. So, my the person who who took your email that's my oldest daughter. She sings right, and my other daughter, one of my other daughters, right there playing with the bubbles. She 
has a hearing disability. Oh. So she's a special needs child. She's going to uh, hopefully one day grow up to do really cool stuff like this, like Special Olympics. And uh, and maybe she could look up to somebody like you. Would Since you have a mentor, would you like to become a mentor for other people eventually? Yeah? Yeah. So what does that mean to you? What, it, what, what, what could you do to help mentor other people that are following the same path as you? I can teach them new things. Yeah? Like Grace teaches me. And she's been a mentor for me for eight years, since fourth grade. Wow. And I could just help them. I could be like a grace to them. That's amazing. And I can help them and show them what I have learned. That's amazing. What is, what is the biggest lesson that Grace has ever taught you? Running and helps me with my schoolwork. Good. Awesome. Okay. So last question. I'm so proud that the Special Olympics are finally here this year and next year again for the Spring Games. We are here in Farmingdale. We call ourselves Dalers here. Dalers. So, so now that you're a, a Special Olympics athlete in Farmingdale, you know you're officially a Daler. Wow. Right? So what do you think a Daler is? Someone who lives in Farmingdale. Well, what else? What, what kind of and qualities? And they go to the school What here. kind of qualities do you think a Daler would have? Running qualities. Love Sports it. qualities, athlete qualities, love. And love. That's the main one for Adela. All right. So thank you for joining us today. This is awesome. Oh, you're welcome. Can't wait for this episode to come out. We'll share it with you and share it with all your friends. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Good seeing you. Okay. Back with another guest. We have Michelle here today. Hey, Michelle. How are Hi. you? Hi. Nice to meet you. As you guys know, we, we are interviewing uh, all kinds of people here at the Special Olympics today. Athletes, coaches, Vendors, uh, uh, volunteers, parents, whatever, everybody that's here. So, Michelle, uh, tell me a little bit about what you do, what you're doing here at the Special Olympics today. Uh, first, it's a pleasure to be on your podcast um, and to be here at the Special Olympics today. Um, I am a behavioral consultant. I've been in the field for over 30 years at this point. Um, and I partnered up with uh, Theory of Arts and Sciences and what they are as a learning center. With that was born... Um, uh, Provider Connects, which is a full-service agency that uh, that has contracts with districts to be able to provide uh, things like behavior intervention services, consultation, parent training. Uh, we have also insurance uh, that we can that we contract out, private pay, and then we also have Smart Start Centers, which we uh, goes into the adulthood, where uh, we can through ISS and again insurance and OPWDD provide many classes for uh, individuals, and uh, such as cooking, um, uh, makeup, uh, uh, clothing design, um, uh, painting, anything yeah. and everything you can think of uh, that's going to help service uh, in people with intellectual disabilities. Um, so we focus on the whole child, um, and we focus on not just the uh, uh, adults or children with uh, intellectual disabilities, but um, anybody can come to our centers and choose what they might need for their them or their family. Yeah. So we also have sibling-based programs as well. We have a summer program um, through uh, through Provider Connects that uh, we're launching this summer. And we also have four, four locations. So we have Deer Park, we have Hicksville, um, and... Uh, uh, Mineola is coming in September and Riverhead. Wow. So, and they're beautiful, state of the art facilities um, that can address your child's needs, either again privately through school districts or through insurance or ISS. Yeah, that's incredible. We were talking a little bit about, uh, about this before, and we sort of uh, realized that we had some synergy here. Uh, I, I consult for a couple of organizations uh, that do similar work but different. So, it's, it's to me, the thing that struck me is the transition from school to adulthood. And, and I know that's so important. I, um, I, I've been focusing a lot on learning about uh, what work looks like, whether it's vocational training or entrepreneurship after school is over for people with disabilities. And, and I love meeting people that not only host programs, but give people opportunities to kind of have a really rich life. I, I, I'm very new to this world. I'm still learning every single day. Um, but me being who I am as an entrepreneur, I'm always thinking, well, wh why is it just a job? Why is that the only expectation? Why can't there be more? You know. So what I'd like to piggyback yeah. on that is what I love about working with the team that I had that's so diverse. 
that is exactly what our passion is because our students, we don't say you can't go to college or you can't have this job or this career. It's really about finding that. So with working with the team that I work with, we have individuals that are getting into Ivy League colleges or college prep. We're sitting down with the families and getting them to understand what services are out there within colleges. There are programs, and just because you might have a disability doesn't mean that you can't follow your dreams and what you might want to do. There's always something out there. It could be a vocational program or it could be uh, working. Um, I have a student right now looking to work in Freeport in, um, in a marina. That's their passion. Yeah. Wherever these, wherever any of us have a passion, you want to follow that because then it doesn't feel like work, right? Yeah. Yeah. So following anybody into adulthood is important. We're starting um, even dating. Just because you might have a, uh, any type of disability doesn't mean that you don't want to date and you don't want to have that type. You don't want to get married. You don't want to have um, that type of life. It doesn't end when you graduate high school. Your life is just beginning. So what we want to do is give those opportunities and asking the community what they need. They tell us what they need. We say, let's do it. My team that I work with, there's no no. It's okay. How do we do it? Who can we partner up with to make this happen so that everybody has a more fulfilling life? Yeah. So, And I've had students, like I said, uh, they were three years old. I mean, now they're you know, in their 20s. And um, it's very interesting to see the circle of how far they've come or what passion they've found. And, and even just events like this here today, this wasn't around 20 right. years ago. And, and this is kind of uh, what I find exciting about what's happening now is there's a real evolution in the word inclusion, right? So inclusion, I think what it used to mean was just including people in the conversation that were not necessarily included. But now it's really becoming having those people be really included in everything that happens, you know, not just being there, but growing together. And so that, that's why programs like these are super important. So yeah, this Thank is awesome. I, I can't wait to learn more about it. What do you think about these games here today in Farmingdale? Um, the games are amazing. I have to say I am a Daler. My children um, attended these schools. I have a, a, a senior this year who's graduating. And um, I have to say that uh, this is incredible how they transformed this into um, an Olympic village and yeah. all the games and everything happening and, and the individuals that are coming up that are participating and and how important it is that they are included in this because you have a lot of talent out here i i mean and you also have very independent people yeah. living on their own having jobs just as social as you and i standing right here and just because they have a disability we really need to focus on their abilities and what they can do in life today not what they couldn't do maybe in school because yeah. that's the focus but we have to really look past once a child starts to get older and, and find what they are talented in and continue to do more of this so that they feel included and that you know, I had my own children here today and helping and volunteering. And I think it's important that the community get together and, and, and attend these events, yeah. not yeah. just people who know people with a, you know, a disability, but everybody should be here. Love that. And, and, and because this is my community as well, like I'm seeing that today. There are people involved today that really don't have a connection to the disability world. So, which is so cool. And that's what this thing is about. And we're so happy to have you today. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes for, for your businesses and everything. I'll reach out thank and get you. those from you. So thank you, Michelle, for being on today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yep. Have a good day. You thank too. you. Okay, we're back with another interview. We have right now Sebastian. How are you, Sebastian? I'm good, thank you. Good, thanks for joining today. So tell me what you're doing here at the Special Olympics today. Supporting my brother. Supporting your brother. Is your brother an athlete? Yes. Okay, cool. So what, what sports is he doing? What, what games, I should say? He is doing um, the, run, the running games. The running games? Okay, cool. Did he, so is he finished already for the day? He is now doing the long jump right now. Okay, cool, cool. So how long has he been doing Special Olympics for? He has been doing this for, for two years. Two years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, does he enjoy it? Yes, he really does. Ah, good. So do you have a big support system in your family for him? Yes, definitely. All right, cool. So what's it like supporting a brother? Your brother has a disability? Yes. Okay, what's it like supporting your brother? You know, supporting my brother is like the most important thing because, you know, having, because having only one brother in my life, you know, I feel like that it's important for me to support someone that has a disability. And I really like my brother because, like, he is, like, the only person that I really like. And, like, um, and, you know, having 
him doing the Olympics is just a good opportunity for him. That's great. That's great. What uh, what, what is your brother? Does your brother look at you as a mentor? Definitely. Yeah, he looks yeah. up to you, right? Yeah. And what what kind of stuff do you try to teach your brother? I try to teach him about how to have like lots of confidence, um, showing him how to be brave, being um, kind, and definitely being um, helpful. Love that. Love that. So, so the LaunchCast, the show that we're on right now, is a, is a podcast about leadership. So this is the topic uh, of the show. It's what we talk about. And we always talk about um, how to be a leader in our community, in our family, in our job. So it sounds like you're a real leader in your family. I kind of am. Yeah. yeah, good. That's good for you, man. Tell me a little bit about yourself, too. Um, Long Beach. I live in Long Beach. Uh-huh. Um, 12th grade, high school. Okay. And... In my school, there's, like, a lot of people who, like, there's a lot of people. I just like to just be by myself, but then sometimes when I'm with some of my friends, it's like they probably are doing their own thing, and then sometimes um, I just like doing my own thing. And some, and I work really hard for the stuff that I have, and I feel very proud because, like, I always um, get good grades and stuff because sometimes um, I get taken advantage of during school. But that doesn't, but I'm... Because for one, it doesn't bother me. Because for one, I always, um, always try to ignore them. Because I'm not that type of person to like to get adva- um, to get advantage of. Good for you. Good for you. So it sounds like you really stand up for yourself. You know who you are. I know who I am, and it, it, I know who I am. That's it. That's, that's all it. that matters. Good yeah. for you. That that's the biggest le- leadership lesson we've learned today. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Sebastian. Anything you want to say before we go? Not at all. All right. Good. Well, well. Here we're here in Farmingdale. So I don't know if you know this, but. Farmingdale, anybody from Farmingdale that goes to school here, involved here, we're called Dalers. So because you're here today on the show, you're an official Daler. I hope you know that. That's so come, great. Come back anytime to Farmingdale, all right, buddy? Thank you. All right, thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Okay, great. So that will do it for the interviews from the Special Olympics Games at Farmingdale, the Spring Games. I am recording this uh, a couple of weeks after the Special Olympics uh, in what seems like to me in editing this thing uh, a little bit of a disjointed episode because this is not our typical episode where we have, you know, 10 different interviews and um, piece them together to put together one full episode. But what seems disjointed or what seemed disjointed at first before I finally sat down to edit this thing and... um, put the final bookend on it and record a closing to it uh, was sort of beautifully disjointed. You know, I I sat in media row with my podcast set up and put together, you know, a, a string of interviews with athletes, with volunteers. And uh, I didn't really know what type of content that we would get out of it. All I really wanted to do was give the athletes and the volunteers at the Special Olympics an opportunity to just really feel appreciated, you know. Uh, It's a really special event um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, From the athlete's uh, perspective, it it is such an opportunity to showcase that they are more than what meets the eye. There is so much more to individuals than what we see on the surface, and and that's why that event is so special, so special to these athletes. For the volunteers, for the people that put this thing together, it's an opportunity to give back. It's an opportunity to feel good, um, and so yeah, being able to showcase that through uh, sponsoring Media Row and you know setting up the podcast to just interview whoever came by, <clears throat> it proved to be such a unique experience and a unique opportunity um and lo and behold you know you put these things together you string them together into a show and there's kind of a story being told right you know you listen to this thing and i'm actually super proud of this episode as disjointed as i thought it was going to be um because yeah there is a sort of theme that that comes through here right and it's (laughs) it's pretty it's pretty funny that this is a leadership based podcast and I had no intention of speaking about leadership per se on this show. I just wanted to kind of interview these athletes and, and tell some stories and uh, smile a little, have some laughs. And lo and behold, that's what happens. We talked about leadership multiple times. Um, these athletes really taught me some lessons in leadership um, <clears throat> from the perspective of what they do from their mentors and, um, 
and and how they look to lead in the future. And man, the future is bright. I will say that <clears throat> I have an interesting story. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it briefly. Um, that kind of goes with this. A couple of years back, uh, and I'll get pretty specific on this. A couple of years back, um, I had two individuals that spoke at my first uh, TEDx Farmingdale event in 2019, Dave Thompson and Josh Mursky. Uh, they spoke about neurodiversity and how um, uh, uh, inclusion is not just a, a thing that you should do, but um, how these different thinkers can really change the game, right? That was kind of the, the, the theme of the whole thing, uh, although a lot deeper than that. Um, and once we finished up the thing, you know, uh, uh, Josh works for Spectrum Designs, Dave works for the Nicholas Center, uh, Human Services Agency, and I had heard they had an incredible operation going on there, and I was like, yeah, I want to tour the place. Uh, and so I was lucky enough to be a guest on their podcast, Sounds Like Autism, and right after our interview, uh, we popped over, right after or before i forget uh we popped over there they gave me a tour of the place and it was incredible but an old feeling crept back right because there was a lot of um individuals there that were on the spectrum um uh differing abilities amongst uh the entire crowd there um some people have more difficulties than others in, in not only working but expressing themselves uh social abilities and things like that and this feeling of uncomfortableness crept in that I really hadn't felt in so long and I kind of forgot it was back there in the back of my head somewhere. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, although what a great group of people um, because of the different types of social abilities and social interactions, there were a couple of individuals that were um, kind of on top of me, uh, uh, a little bit touchy-feely, a little bit handsy. It made me a little bit um, uncomfortable in that moment. And I walked out of there just knowing what an amazing place it was. And I was kind of disgusted at myself for feeling that way. And it wasn't something I could help. Um, it just literally triggered something inside of me. And, and I felt that way. And I'm just being honest about it. And I remember sitting down with Dave afterwards and I told him the truth about that, how I felt. And I was like, I need to change this. I know that there's an underlying reason for that. I had a family member years ago um, and, and I was so young that I don't really know um, whether he was on the spectrum or, or what type of disability he had. But um, I remember when I was younger, he made me feel uncomfortable through no fault of his own. Obviously, it's just I was a little kid. It was a little scary for me. It was very abrasive. Um, <clears throat> and it, I guess, to a degree, kind of traumatized me a little bit. And... <clears throat> I think that's where that kind of comes from. And so I sat down with Dave and I was like, hey, this is how I feel. This is where I think it comes from. I need to get over this. I need to get over this. This is not um, something I like feeling. Um, and so to get over it, I need to learn more about people on the spectrum. I need to learn um, intimately, um, get involved uh, with these individuals. How can I help? How can I include people in my activities? Um, and so forth. And of course, Dave being Dave, Dave's one of my uh, close buddies and, and we work together on another podcast and we actually work together in general. I work with his organization now uh, to a degree. So he was like, yeah, man, let's, let's get you involved. And so he has made every effort to help me get involved, to teach me things I didn't know uh, about these communities. And here we are, you know, three years later and <clears throat> I was so happy to be at the Special Olympics, to have dedicated time in my life and bandwidth in my life to learn more about people with differing abilities, people with disabilities, people on the spectrum, um, so many different um, uh, uh, varieties of, of incredible human beings were at this event. And, and to be able to sit down <clears throat> at this event um, and partake in these festivities and include this community in my world, in the stuff that I do, um, that's the true idea of inclusion. And that's what a lot of these organizations are fighting for. Inclusion is about not just <clears throat> being okay with people, which is a very judgmental thing to say. Um, it's including every type of person in every type of activity. 
right? And and the work that I put in over these last couple of years to educate myself, um, <clears throat> to expose myself to these communities, to really get rid of this stigma that was in my head, this this trauma that was kind of like stuck in there for whatever reason from uh, uh, childhood fear. Um, and it's gone away. It's gone. Um, and I'm so proud of some of the work <clears throat> that I have done in recent years. Um, and it's it's because of that effort that I put in to, to better myself, to make myself better, because I was the one with the problem. Nobody else, right? Uh, and so I get to do things like work with John Cronin and Mark Cronin and produce their podcast, uh, the Spreading Happiness podcast. I get to consult for a ton of nonprofits, um, that do incredible things. It's some of them working with people with differing abilities, people on the autism spectrum. Um, man, there's a whole world out there if you open yourself up. So uh, that's all I want to say. I want to thank everybody that was part of this episode today. Uh, <clears throat> this was so much fun. Um, there was one individual, I want to shout him out by name, William Segarra is his name. He was an individual that we interviewed and the audio uh, got totally screwed up and was unusable. And I, I feel horrible about that, but I do want to shout him out because he was an incredible interview. It was only, you know, two or three minutes, but uh, <clears throat> the audio got screwed up and, and it is not salvageable. So shout out to him. Um, big shout out to the Farmingdale School District for putting this thing together. Paul Defendini, uh, Brian Norton, the whole team there, uh, everybody that was part of the, 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 the Olympic Village, the volunteers for the games, timekeepers, um, uh, judges, uh, everybody, everybody. This was a whole community that really banded together after a really tough time in our community, honestly. Um, it was great to see faces uh, together that, that haven't been seen together in a while. And so um, it's what all this stuff is about. So I want to thank everybody for uh, their work in, in making our community shine again. Uh, as it always does, this was such a blast. I can't wait till next year because it's coming back again for another year. Uh, <clears throat> I can't wait till next year to uh, to volunteer again and and you know maybe bring something new to the table again and uh, and just really have a blast. So uh, uh, great time today. Thank you to the athletes uh, and the volunteers that participated in our interviews. Join us next week and every week. Later, guys. Launch sequence terminated. Into the black hole. The LaunchCast is brought to you by Launchpad 516 Studios, produced by Fabrizio Fugazi and executive produced by George Andriopoulos. Marketing and PR by Media Convergence. Theme song by Tommy Lungberg. Music and sound effects are licensed through Epidemic Sound. The LaunchCast is hosted with Podbean. Make sure to subscribe to this feed wherever podcasts are available and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts while you're at it, guys. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Pandora, TuneIn, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podbean, and everywhere else that podcasts are available. Follow me, George Andriopoulos, the host at Launchpad CEO on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or follow the show at The Launchcast Show on Facebook and Instagram, or at Launchcast Show on Twitter. Visit our website, thelaunchcast.com, and make sure to follow all the great podcasts produced by Launchpad 516 Studios. We'll see you next time, guys.